Well, welcome back. And today I just happened to look over at my iPod Touch, my 6th gen, and I noticed it just had this little bit of a weird thing going on here. Look at that. The screen has literally started to separate. This is an indication, of course, of the battery swelling. Now, this is the least, least used iPod or any Apple product in my house. Immediately I turned it off, of course, down in the basement, away from anything flammable in a lipo charging bag like such it does fit in here i had it in here once already it has simply been used for the occasional use of the flare one that's it uh, first thing i noticed was it has a darker strip right up the middle here that's battery tension on the lcd so right now my lcd is at risk a lot of damage is at risk if i don't stop this battery from puffing up any further at this point if this adhesive didn't give it all this would have cracked the lcd would have cracked the glass would have cracked would have cost me a lot more to repair. Why are we not in the lab? Why are we in the kitchen, you ask? Well, because this guy requires a microwave. This is the iFixit eye opener. I originally planned to do an iPad mini screen replacement fix with it, but little did I know that the screen had already been replaced and it just popped right off with a guitar pick. So it wasn't really a good example of the iFixit eye opener and its abilities to maintain heat to actually loosen up the adhesive as far as Apple's uh, default adhesive. I got a microwave in the kitchen, that's why we're on the kitchen table today. We're going to use this and demonstrate and let's see how good this works as far as pulling the rest of the screen off. So this way I get the rest of the screen off, I get the LCD out and I can at least disconnect that battery. Also, we have the iFixit essential toolkit today. Now I know I've also demonstrated some other toolkits that iFixit has uh, sent me. The one, the boy, uh, iFixit ProTech toolkit, which was a very nice kit. But I hadn't gotten around to actually showing this one. I figured this is a good combination. It's not. It's not for the. I'm. I'm a you know, permanent future fix it type of hobbyist. I'm going to do this frequent. It's maybe I'm going to do this once or twice with some devices. My kids keep breaking their iPods or iPads or phones, what have you, and I'm tired of paying for other people to fix this. So I'm going to buy a few tools to do it myself. This has the nice magnetic case, which actually acts as a screw holder as well. Inside the essential toolkit, you have a few of, well, I guess what you would call your essentials. You have a little plastic prior. Uh, it comes with a pair of ESD safe tweezers, screwdriver. It comes with a wide selection of different bits here. And then we also have a little suction cup, which is designed to place on the screen after you loosen it up to actually pull the screen off evenly. It has a little release section over here. I kind of like that release, it works very well. Basically you just push forward and it just releases the tension on this. So that's a nice little uh, suction cup, I like that. And then you come with some some picks. We got six picks here. We have a splurger. You've seen many of these splurgers. I use them as pointers on my desk. And of course they do have this. For you. And this is will definitely help work our way around the 6th gen iPod Touch. So we're going to use the essential toolkit and we're going to use the eye opener to actually heat up around here and we'll start off on the battery side so we can finish where this started basically because since the battery's already done such a good job of releasing the side the side without the volume rockers and even even the side with the volume rockers it's loose in the middle it's not completely up but it's loose the bottom has more adhesive you have a, a bigger bezel the white section around here so it has more adhesive. It's going to be a little bit more. It's going to require a little heat. That's where I fixed the eye opener. It's definitely going to come in handy as far as sitting, sitting that there and letting that warm that up. I could use the uh, SMD hot, hot air soldering station, but I really want to try this and show you guys how this works. If it works, give, my, give you my opinion on it. Some people don't want to buy a, a full professional on tools. Maybe you're just looking for a cheaper set of tools to do the job. Maybe it's a one-time repair. You can actually get a battery from iFixit for this for $10. So $10 for this. I don't remember the cost of this or this, but I'm sure even with all three, the, the battery, this and this, and maybe some 3M double-sided adhesive to, to put back on green and, and put everything back together again, it's probably going to still come out less than $79. And this, 
This covers your first iPod Touch that you may fix if you have multiple kids in the house. The second one that breaks, well, you already own this, you already own this, and we just happen to have some rubbing alcohol pads, so you can find these at your local pharmacy if you don't have the a full thing of isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to clean my screen a little bit here. This will help the suction cup stick to it. I'm not pressing too hard because this battery is already bulged, so we want to be very careful not to aggravate this cell anymore. I think we're good there. Let me look up some instructions and see how long it says. I think it's about 15, 30 seconds. Put it in, let it rest 15 seconds. I'll be right back. They have eye opener instructions here. It's very simple. Heat it up for 30 seconds. If it looks swollen, don't pull it out. It's too hot. Uh, let it cool down. Make sure if you're on a carousel, make sure it doesn't inside the microwave and that it actually rotates full 360 without any problems inside the microwave. After 30 seconds of heating it up, remove it from the microwave by grabbing the ends here, which have none of the gel in it. Face it clear side down on the side of the screen that you want. They say 90 seconds at a time on each side and then start working your way of removing the, the screen and the, you know releasing the adhesive from the frame of whatever device you're working on. Uh, reheat is necessary as it gets cool and to work on each side as you go. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Uh, on the other hand, their battery replacement guide is uncompleted. You can see it actually says uncompleted. To get to the battery, it seems like our easiest way is going to be following the iPod Touch Generations display assembly replacement. The assembly replacement will take me all the way down to the point of exactly where I need to be to remove the display and to remove this metal shield here. Once you get this metal shield here off, they say to start to remove these screws and everything, but because you're, they're expecting you to actually remove the LCD or, or the, uh, the digitizer, the screen itself, the glass, we're not going to be doing that. I should be able to just lay this over on its side forward. Uh, underneath this black tape here, I should be able to heat this up, pull this tape up with a pair of tweezers, and then it should be kept on tape under here, and then I can desolder the battery from underneath the kept on tape under here. I'll show you here how to remove the battery, how, to, how they recommend heating the other side with a hot air gun, because the battery is actually also adhesive, it's glued in as well. How to gently pry up on it and everything. Now some of this is preference. I don't think I would use this tool to pry up on the battery. It's already a volatile cell being being uh, puffed up as it is so I would probably use something thinner like this or maybe actually I, I think I would prefer to use one of the credit card looking things to get under there evenly and just get the whole battery out with a single shot after heating up the adhesive a little bit from the other side so let me go ahead and pause out here let's heat this up in the microwave 30 seconds and I'll be right back Okay, so I have an 1100 watt microwave. I did 30 seconds and it did not puff up to beyond to where it's dangerously too much as far as being heated up. I want to lay it down, try to cover maybe half of the, uh, cover this corner and also maybe half of the top bezel as well. They say 90 seconds. Let's go ahead and start the clock here. the tools that I'm going to want to use. I'm going to want to use this, this, the splurger, and possibly this. Start here. We may even get the suction cup out and get that ready. We're going to start with the picks. And let's see how loose we've gotten. How hot it's gotten, actually. All right. I was able to get all the way under the corner there. Nice. Let's work down the side here. The point of this is to not break my glass. And have to replace the digitizer too. That would really, really be bad. I think we're at that point where we're going to start heating up laying this way. While we're at that, let's check to see what side the ribbon cable is on by looking at the screen replacement instructions. Looks like we want to lift up from the home button part, but not all the way because part of it actually is attached with adhesive and a cable. Alright, so I'm going to stay away from that side. I'm going to work our way from the home button side. Okay. 
which is what I've heated up over here. So we got 52 seconds on the clock. Now this is cooled down a little bit. May or may not have to put it back in the microwave a little bit, so let's find out. See if I can work this a little bit more. It seems to be coming undone fairly, fairly nice. Try to stay away from that home button cabling. Okay, we got a good gap going on here. I think it's time to uh, heat the eye opener back up so we can lay it down this side here. So I'll be right back. Let's put it back in for a full 30 seconds. I put it back in for 15 seconds just to heat it back up again. By Just by touch, I'd say it's slightly hotter than the first 30 seconds. So maybe I overdid it. Maybe I should have only put it in for about another 10 seconds for a little refresh. That probably would have been enough. But since it's a little hotter, I may only keep it resting on top of this for, instead of 90 seconds, maybe 60. So we'll grab another pick. Let's see if I can, let's use the existing pick kits here. There we go. Wow. That is really nice. I felt that just split really, really easy. Oh, wow. That really is coming up easy. That's impressive. I'm going to put one under here. Save my spot. Actually, I'm just going to hold this open with my, uh, no, we'll put one here. This actually may have been a lot easier than using a, a even an SMD controlled hot air to, to, to remove the adhesive. It came up really easy. I like that. You can see the whole thing's already just coming up for me. Now we haven't done this side yet the heat of this we're still good here we're going to lay this here I may lay it a little longer we're going to just heat up this side though it really does distribute the heat nice and even across just the adhesive that you're looking to to unglue and get undone that was really easy that, that came up a lot nicer than I thought it would because I know Apple's stock adhesive is very hard and very difficult to to get loosened up especially even using hot air because even when you're using hot air, whether you're using a blow dryer or a controlled SMD hot air reflow workstation, you're still blowing back and forth and, and you, you never really get a consistent heat across the whole entire angle or the edge or the corner that you're working on. This actually does lay a nice, consi Ooh, it's a little hot. nice consistent heat across the whole thing. So I think that really does make it a lot easier. It heats up the adhesive easy. So once you start to get one corner, the whole thing just kind of separates and comes right up. So if I was definitely doing screen replacements constantly, I would probably invest in one of these. This was a lot easier than using a hot air station. At least that part was. So let's see if we can finish this off here. And I've already demonstrated once a while back using this. So I'm trying to... Uh, use just the picks this time to give a different way of doing things. Looks like we got underneath the, uh, looks like we've unclipped some of the bezel there. I'm okay with that though. That still comes up, right? Let's twist it a little. See, I have a little bit of the bezel on unclipped. Not much. I'm going to run down the side of the bezel and detach that from the glue. Maybe not. Since it's already come undone, 
me see, how's this bezel sitting in here? I can see the camera attached in there. Definitely don't want that. I think I wanted that bezel to come undone. I wanted to leave that bezel in there. Although we could have pulled the bezel and the screen out. Let's see if I can get the whole bezel out here at this point. We're going to use the Try to unclip the bezel, bring the whole bezel out with the screen. Since the bezel came out the top, and the bezel seems to be little plastic clips, should be easy to put back. There we go. Not always does the instructions happen exactly the way you want to, but close enough. Actually, I mean, guides are just a guideline. It's not going to be to a T. I'm really trying not to break that bezel. There's one more clip that seems to be stubborn right here. I don't know why that one clip is so stubborn. There we go. All right. So now we have the whole screen up. So yeah, the uh, eye opener. Very impressed with it. It was very nice, very easy, very quick. Even left this. I, it even left the, this is, this was clean, this was a nice adhesive came off real clean around the home button without a problem at all. Well, let's try double zero, let me try hit that head just right. That eye opener worked so well I absolutely had no need to even use the suction cup. I did throw that bottom corner to a different square in my tools here. So I have uh, one set of screws in one little square and these bottom corners down here since they're embedded lower. I figured they were shorter screws. They're actually in a different square. This helps me separate the two. I know there's little clips in here. There it is. You know what? This middle plate actually continues down into here. So we have four more screws that, again, will probably be different sizes. Now you could follow the iFixit guide, and that will tell you if these screws are different sizes. There's a screw that didn't come out. Take those tweezers and get in here. There it is. Look out on the adhesive. There we go. It looks like my metal plate is up. I'm going to flip my metal plate over. And most definitely, what I have here is a swollen battery. There's no doubt about that. That battery has definitely puffed up. So, yeah, this needs to go. I'm not going to worry about disconnecting the LCD or anything. Under this piece of black tape here is going to be some Kapton. Under that Kapton is going to be my three solder points for the battery. And we're going to have to get this battery out and get this replaced. And they actually recommend pulling the adhesive or the home button up before pulling the plate off, but... I didn't seem to run into that. I think I may have a slightly different design 6th gen. 
because if you can see here I did not have an issue where the cabling or any ribbon cable was in my way for that home button that didn't seem to be a concern of mine at all in fact let's take a closer look they recommended pulling up the adhesive for the home button and actually pulling the home button off before moving the plate but you can see the plate lined up in the way it did didn't have an issue with mine at all I mean the cable is here but the plate was on top of the cable it didn't get in the way so I didn't I didn't seem to run into that same issue that's stated in the uh, LCD repair guide for the 6th gen iPod touch interesting same screws there was different sizes here there's one different size here uh, and then it mentions pulling out these screws here remove the fill screws the logic board to the rear case now is that needed to remove the battery in my case no. don't think that will be necessarily needed and removing the home button I don't think is needed in my case either we're done with the kitchen table design of things. Let's move things back up under the microscope and get this battery unsoldered.